Distance is one of our universe's most fundamental physical quantities. On this page, we'll attempt to count some distances. To do this, you'll need a measurement device having an arbitrary unit length, sometimes called a found object. What are some unit lengths used for measuring distances? Units of the past were based on the human body. For example, people might have used the length of their feet to measure things. And we still use the foot today, although it's been standardized. The cubit was the length of a person's forearm from the elbow to the fingertip. And paces would be the length of a stride that a person generally makes. But those things could vary quite a bit in length. Nowadays, we use yards, meters, and miles, and so on. In order to decide how far apart these two figures are, we have to use a unit length. I'll choose an object which on paper might be about the size of a toothpick. So how many toothpicks apart are these two figures? What I'll do is I'll repeat the object, placing it end to end, to see how far apart they are. And it's close to two. A little bit less. But remember that in the past, we didn't have decimals and fractions. Note that if we're counting with the mathematical set of whole numbers shown below, distances would have to be rounded to the nearest whole unit. There could be no fractions of units. So the distance between these figures would have to be chosen to be two sticks or three sticks, and it could not be 2.5 sticks. But this brings up a fundamental problem when it comes to measurement. In your everyday experience, are distances between objects restricted to multiples of a particular whole unit? Or is it possible for the distance between two objects to be any distance? Which one seems more true, the top one or the bottom one? I'll say no to the top one and yes to the bottom one. Similarly, when we move, do we teleport instantaneously from one location to another? Or do we move from one location to the next in a smooth, continuous motion, occupying every position between the positions? I'll put no for the top one and yes for the bottom one. Unlike counting a number of rocks, physical distances and lengths aren't always measured just by counting with the whole number set. Instead, today we use much more advanced number sets to describe distances. That brings us to the difference between discrete and continuous. A quantity that's only allowed to take on specific numeric values would be considered discrete. An example is counting a number of rocks. A rock either exists or it doesn't, so only whole numbers are allowed. The whole numbers are an example of a discrete number set. They only exist on the hash marks. And we don't see any decimals or fractions here. The term continuous is used to describe a quantity that can take on any different real numeric value. An example would be lengths and distances. The values that could be given to these quantities belong to a number set that's infinitely dense. And the real numbers are an example of an infinitely dense number set. Between any two points on the real number line is an infinite number of different real numbers. Some of the following are restricted to certain values, and others seem to be able to take on any values. Consider each concept below and decide whether it's fundamentally discrete or continuous.
The number of rocks in a driveway is discrete. That's the example I started my videos with. Rocks either exist or they don't. When it comes to the length of a fish, though, fish grow from small size to large size, occupying every length in between as they grow. So the answer to the question of how long a fish is could be any real number. For that reason, the length of a fish is continuous. When it comes to the area of a bathroom tile, the area of a rectangle is a product of length times width. And since length and width are both continuous, meaning they could be anything, the area can be anything too, so it's continuous as well. When it comes to quarters in your pocket, a fraction of a quarter doesn't make sense. And quarters are discrete. Angle of the sun is continuous. What about time? I have a few videos that I found on YouTube which can explain time. This first video is of a ticking clock. Notice that the second hand does not sweep through all the different positions. Only certain positions are allowed, and it holds those positions for a full second before jumping instantaneously to the next. So this is a discrete clock. But does that mean that time itself is discrete? Let's look at another clock which is a smooth, continuous sweep clock. What's different here is here the second hand is allowed to occupy every different position. And there's one more clock to show. It's a digital clock. Is this a discrete clock or a continuous clock? Because the time jumps from one second to the next, without showing the different fractions between, this is a discrete clock. So what's the answer? Time is fundamentally continuous. It's what allowed Sir Isaac Newton, famous physicist and mathematician, to discover the mathematics of calculus. And calculus is the study of continuous change, how one quantity can change with another. What about dollars? Well, for that one, I put depends on context, and here's why. If we're talking about dollar bills in your pocket, then those are not divisible. It wouldn't make sense to have a fraction of a dollar bill in your pocket. But in finance math, you actually can treat dollars as a continuous quantity and do calculus on it. Uh, so I'll say it depends on context. Now test yourself. Consider the following variable. The variable x represents a number of pennies in a person's pocket. Which of the following are true? Take a look at the choices and decide. Okay, the choices that I checked were, I chose B, a penny either exists or it doesn't. I also chose C. A fraction of a penny in a person's pocket wouldn't have meaning to people. I chose E. There is a smallest division of a penny, which is just the single penny, and that unit cannot be subdivided. I chose choice F. A number of pennies is best described by counting rather than measuring. And I chose G. The whole number set can count how many pennies are in a given person's pocket 
and a more advanced number set is not required. Finally, my conclusion was J. The number of pennies in a person's pocket is actually a discrete variable. In this example, x represents the longitude angle that a person is standing at. Which of the following are true? Take a look at the choices and decide. The whole number set is not sufficient to describe this variable, and the rational or real numbers are needed for us to make precise measurements about the angle that a person's standing at. I also chose B. A longitude can be infinitely subdivided into fractions or decimals of an angle, and those subdivisions and fractions would have meaning to people. I chose F. The longitude that you're at is a variable that would be scientifically measured using instruments. And my conclusion was G. The angle that a person is standing at is a continuous variable. Test yourself on this question. Which of the following variables are discrete? Check any boxes that represent discrete quantities. And keep in mind, the whole numbers is an example of a discrete number set. Here's what I chose. The zip code of your current address is discrete. Fractions wouldn't make sense to the concept. I chose B, the number of dollar bills in a person's pocket is discrete. Uh, I chose C because an animal either exists or it doesn't. I chose D, the world's population is discrete, fractions of a person don't make sense. I chose E. A count of the viruses present in a sample obtained from a patient. Half of a virus wouldn't make sense. I chose choice H. Um, a fraction of an M&M &M wouldn't make sense. Which of the following variables are continuous? The hint is continuous variables are measured, and the real numbers is an example of a continuous number set. I chose A. The weight of a physical object is continuous because it could take on any real value. I chose B, the elapsed time between two events is continuous, as I showed with the continuous sweep clock. I chose D, the volume of a physical object would be continuous because the volume of a box would be length times width times height, and those dimensions themselves are continuous, so the volume is 2. I chose F, the speed a vehicle is traveling at would be continuous. It could be anything. It's based on distance and time, and both distance and time are continuous. I chose H, the latitude that you're at, similar to longitude, is an angle, so um, that's something that could be infinitely subdivided. I chose J, the area of a physical object. And I chose L, the temperature of a room. Uh, oftentimes, quantities which are measured scientifically are continuous.